This video provides an overview of how to create a pavement design with Farfield by the Office of Airports at the Federal Aviation Administration. The previous video in this series, Farfield Overview, covers installing Farfield as well as creating and setting up job files and sections. Refer to Advisory Circular AC 150-5320-6 Airport Pavement Design and Evaluation and AC 150-5335-5 Standardized Method of Reporting Payment Strength PCR for the basis of the design and evaluation procedures implemented in Farfield. Discussion topics include Farfield, Pavement Design, Steps to Create a Design, and Reports. In order to run a thickness design with Farfield 2, users must first create a pavement structure, traffic mix, and select a thickness design analysis type. The structure and traffic mix can be constructed in any order. Let's start by creating a flexible pavement design. Click the button next to the pavement type label in the section frame. A drop-down menu displays the seven standard structures from which to choose. Selecting one creates the initial structure. These are the same seven standard structures available in the previous versions of Farfield. New Flexible, HMA on Aggregate, HMA on Flexible, HMA on Rigid, New Rigid, PCC on Flexible, and Unbonded on Rigid. In this particular case, select New Flexible. When you select New Flexible, Farfield creates a structure that includes a P401 surface layer, a P401 stabilized base layer, and a P209 crushed aggregate layer. Farfield depicts these structures in both a grid view and in an image of a structure showing a cross section of the various layers. You can edit the structure in grid view or image view. In this example, let's modify the subgrade strength to be a CBR of 5. In grid view, Click the CBR value in the subgrade layer. Change it from 10 to 5. Or click the subgrade layer in the image view. This brings up the layer property dialog box where you can modify the subgrade. When done editing the subgrade properties, click OK. Note that as soon as the CBR changes, the modulus assigned to this layer changes to 7500 pounds per square inch or PSI. This is done by following the conversion from CBR to E, as discussed in AC 150-5320-6. Next, create the traffic to be used in the analysis. To create a traffic structure, select the Aircraft tab in the Windows Explorer frame. This displays the internal aircraft library. The library is organized in groups based upon aircraft manufacturer, type of aircraft, and or area of use. Groups include Generic, Airbus, Boeing, McDonnell Douglas, Other Large Jet, Regional Slash Commuter, General Aviation, Military, Non-Airplane Vehicles, External Library. The External Library stores the user-defined aircraft. A subsequent video will address how to create a user-defined aircraft. In our example, Let's build a traffic mix similar to the mix used in Appendix H2 of AC 150-5320-6. The first aircraft in our traffic mix is the Boeing 737-800. Navigate to the Boeing group. Find the 737-800. Aircraft can be added to the traffic mix by either dragging and dropping or by selecting the aircraft and double-clicking. The user can adjust the gross taxi weight annual departures, and annual growth rate. Annual departures can be from 0 to 100,000. If you need more than 100,000 departures, enter the aircraft twice. Gross weight can be adjusted plus or minus 25%. Annual growth can be adjusted plus or minus 10%. Farfield calculates the total departures as annual growth times design life in years divided by 200 plus 1 times annual departures times design life. The next aircraft in our traffic mix is the Airbus A321-200 optional. Go to the Airbus group to find this aircraft. Adjust the gross taxi weight and departures. The next aircraft, the Embraer-195, is in the regional slash commuter group, as well as the last aircraft in the traffic mix, the CRJ-700. The fields for tire pressure, percent gross weight on gear, tire contact width and length, 
and tire contact area are as recommended by the aircraft manufacturer. Farfield calculates the fields for cumulative damage factor, or CDF, contributions, CDF max, and pass to coverage ratio during thickness analysis. Once you have added all the aircraft in the traffic mix, users have the option to save the traffic mix. This is done by selecting the Save Aircraft Mix to File button at the top of the traffic frame. This same mix will now be available for use in other analysis without having to re-enter each aircraft. After creating a structure and traffic mix, you can start the design analysis by making sure that the analysis type is set to Thickness Design. Note that in a flexible analysis, Farfield adjusts the thickness of the design layer. The design layer is indicated with a red arrow in the structure window. Click the Run button. The Status tab opens. When the analysis is complete, it indicates the type of analysis performed and how long the analysis took to complete. Clicking the Structure tab brings up the Structure window. The Structure and Grid view depicts a structure that includes 4 inches of P401, 5 inches of P401 stabilized based, and 23.3 inches of P209. Select the Design Options frame. If the Design Options frame is not visible, use the Explore frame to select Design Options. This reveals the Design Options frame on the far right if it is not already displayed. When doing a flexible pavement design, it is recommended to start with the Design Options for Automatic Flexible Base Design set to Yes. When enabled, the program performs internal calculations to check that the base layer is sufficient to protect a layer of CBR of 20. See AC 150-5320-6, Chapter 3. Pavement design is an iterative process. The designer must make adjustments to the structure based upon site conditions, availability, and cost of materials. To make adjustments to the structure, disable the automatic base design by setting it to No in Design Options. Then, make adjustments to the structure. For example, adjust the thickness of the stabilized base to 8 inches. Click Run. When the analysis is complete, you see that the pavement section is now 4 inches P401 surface, 8 inches P401 stabilized base, and 19.3 inches of P209 aggregate base. Once you're done with the pavement design, Round out the layer thicknesses to the thicknesses you will use for construction. In our case, round the P209 thickness to 19.5 inches. Next, change the analysis mode to Life Slash Compaction and click Run. This evaluates the to be constructed structure for life and subgrade compaction requirements. Once the Life Slash Compaction analysis is complete, select Section Report in the Explorer frame and review the section report. Farfield does not automatically save completed compaction analyses. To ensure accurate compaction reports, when reopening Farfield, rerun the compaction analysis after checking that the automatic base design is in the correct mode. The top section of the report includes the job name, section, analysis type, last run date, and design life. The pavement structure information by layer section includes a summary of the structure listing type, Thickness, Modulus, and Poisson's Ratio. Note, Strength R is reserved to indicate the strength of a rigid pavement layer. The airplane information includes a summary of the airplane's name, gross weight, annual departures, and percent of annual growth for the aircraft traffic used in the analysis. The Additional Aircraft Information section includes the name, CDF Contribution, CDF Max for Airplane, and pass to coverage ratio for each plane in the traffic mix. The last section of the report includes the subgrade compaction requirements for non-cohesive and cohesive soils relative to the top of the pavement and relative to the top of the subgrade, the bottom of the pavement structure. Use this information in conjunction with the soils report to determine how much additional compaction may be required. To include a copy in the project engineer's report, save the report as a PDF. If you close a job, reopen it, and review the section report, it may not have the compaction analysis results. If you open the saved PDF of the section report, it will retain all previous calculation results including the compaction analysis. In summary, to create a pavement design, the user must create a pavement structure, a traffic mix, and select a thickness design analysis type. However, 
The final design is a result of the designer making adjustments to the structure based upon site conditions, available materials, and cost of materials. These reference materials provide additional guidance on pavement design. Please visit www.fa.gov airports to find these documents, this tool, and other related design tools. For additional information, contact the FAA's Office of Airports. The FAA appreciates your interest. Safe landing!